Spencer, yes, big, sir. big fight this weekend. Massive fight. Eddie says it's the biggest in British history. Is that right? You're a historian, you know? Biggest in British history. Is that right? Is that right? Do you think this fight is bigger than the, 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 the fight that happened 21 years ago, Nigel Ben Chris Eubank too? I don't. I'm no, saying exactly. what Eddie said. So I'm no, just saying. Yes, 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 he's, pro he's promoting the show. He's not, it's not bigger than that. But it is big. Mm. It's big for the same fact that. But the, the, thing, of, the, the thing about this in, in at Old Trafford, when you had Nigel Ben versus Chris Eubank 2. The first fight ended in, what was it, a ninth round stoppage for, for Chris Eubank in, in 1990. It took three years to build, mm. right? That was on uh, uh, a major platform on terrestrial television. <clears throat> that was amazing because it was a divide because you had uh, 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 Britain was divided to, to loving Nigel Ben because he was an ex-military man and stuff like that. Then you had Chris Eubank, the braggadocio, uh, the, the, you know what I mean, the... the, the uh, it was it was it was it was dismissive and sometimes when he go and, and these are the things that are bad about the right so when he was like that so then right and that the, the country was divided because a lot of people did like Chris Eubank but we liked him for the thing well, we didn't even like him we loved him we loved to hate him mm -hmm. that was a difference so like no even though they got 42,000 at Old Trafford that was incredible mm -hmm. right but this fight here has captured the public imagination because people want to know like right I'm going to history I'm going to see something that is going to be magnanimous regardless of the result mm -hmm. the people are actually coming out to see a good fight and that's the difference so people it's an event it's an event and that's what people are coming out for You're out, the outcome on the main bill for you the outcome um, you got to tune into Sky Sports toe to toe man. we're on demand now baby uh, yeah, I, do, I, know. I love the way you're promoting it every <laughs> single time that's right. we're on demand no, now no, brother no, no, no one can't talk bro. to me it's, it's, it's all about right, but, right. but I mean uh, I'm, you we've know heard what, you thoughts right, on, on the podcast yeah, but what's, right, what's, right, right. My, my, thought, my thoughts would be this that I was I would slightly favour um, Carl Froch um, for the simple fact if Carl Froch didn't get knocked down mm. then I believe that Carl Froch would have won the fight and uh, I don't think George Groves is going to be prepared to win ugly George Groves I believe no disrespect to Carl Froch that could easily outbox him mm. because he's the quicker man mm. right but can you administer that discipline for 12 rounds and this is the next thing if I if I um, if I have an opinion against you from winning a fight. So you're winning, you're going into a fight and I have an opinion against you, I think, Roger, I don't think you're going to win it. Don't mean that I want you to lose. I don't want you to get broke up. I don't want you to see you're hospitalized. I just think like you're not going to win the fight. Mm. Um, but there's so many intangibles we don't know. But if you're basing your intangible, oh, Carl could be old. George Groves also took hellacious shots in that first fight. Mm -hmm. I was ringside. He took some heavy, heavy shots. So we don't know. So I would slightly favor Carl Froch because of the experience, not the experience to say like he knows trickery because mm -hmm. he's not a, he's not a Paul Daniels guy in there. But I'm saying the experience to know that I can I've, I've been here before. I can dredge on it. I can dredge it up. And not only that, but he seems supremely focused. What I do know is going to be a great fight. It's not going to be a Hagler Hearns. Mm -hmm. I think two guys, are, they're both too smart for that. Um, and I think the, the key, whoever can administer a double jab is going to win the fight. And I think last time out, Carl Froch was gone from round one to round five. He started to wake up. And then when he started to administer his jab, he wasn't throwing a jab with conviction. Mm -hmm. right? But this time out now, I think if he can get off his jab with conviction, that's about time. And when you're dealing with somebody who's faster than, he, than you, like Carl Froch is dealing with George Rose, who's faster than he, when you're dealing with a man who's faster than you, you've got you have pinpoint accuracy and timing. We could go back to, to um, you know, um, Shane Mosley when he fought Vernon Forrest, the first fight. Uh, Vernon Forrest, no way could deal with that speed. So what do you do? He, the pinpoint accuracy. Every time they make a flinch, you throw a one-two. And if Carl Froch can administer that, then Carl Froch is going to win the fight. They're both susceptible to left hooks. They're both susceptible to right hands because they both have their, their hand down here when they're throwing a shot. But the difference is this, George Rose could catch him more because George Rose, you know, his hand's down, but it's still facing you. So if he does on that, I see them both working on double jabs. I've seen them when they're working in the gym. It's going to be an interesting fight, but like I said, I'm going to slightly favor Carl Froch. But if George Rose does win, it's still fantastic because I reckon we could do 80,000 again with James Aguil, um versus versus George Rose for a world title. So, I mean, James Aguil's yeah. fight against Brandon Gonzalez. So it's, you know it's about, it's, I know, know, I know a lot about I know about I know a lot about Brandon Gonzalez. Um I was Virgil Virgil Hunter was um just in the back there so and me and Virgil are really cool. Mm. That guy gives me bear props. Mm. I mean because knowledge is power. So uh, um I know I know I've seen him a couple of times because I had to do the last bit. We was going to do a breakdown on him and I said it weren't worth it. This fight's too big to to not disrespect anybody else on the undercut. But you have to look on the things that James Agel does. James Agel is a very, very excellent tactician. He's got to implement his tactical brain and not get, because remember this, James Agel comes out to fight. You see all these seats around here? Pan around, look at all these seats around here. All of these men are going to boo him, you know? Mm. Don't get twisted. James Agel is going to get booed the hell out of him. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah, as long as James Agel can blink at that and focus on what he's doing, easy points win, maybe late stoppage.
All work, dedication. All work. Dedication. All work. Dedication. And that's what we stick to.